Power play here. There's a good chance here with some wheels and a breakaway chance here for six. And it's great save by Lump. Now it's back. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locker Room. I'm Steve Erickson. And I'm Ian Metcalf. Ian, a sad day in sport, the passing of Mickey Mantle. Yeah, it was, you know, and that gentleman won a lot of battles on the field over his career and, and lost the biggest one uh, today, and he's going to be sorely missed. He will, and I guess the biggest thing we can say is for all you youngsters that are watching at home, take care of your body because there was a man that just physically abused it and a very sad day. Anyway, we've got a special show tonight. We've got so many people on the show. Boy, I tell you, I had to get all sorts of paperwork to ask yeah. First feature we're going to show is a special that we went out and did the other day. Diane and Peter went out and did it on Sean Olson, the quarterback for the Surrey Rams. Oh, well, I guess we're not going to do that. Oh, well, we're not quite okay. ready, but yeah, we'll get not. to it. We've we got will. Sean Olson, anyway, <laughs> talking about Sean, as well as Greg McKinnon, linebacker let's, for the let's, Surrey Rams. Let's talk about every caller gets a free pizza from Boston yes, Pizza. Yes, they do. Every caller. Well, first ten. First ten callers get. <laughs> first ten callers. Oh, you just want one. First <laughs> ten callers get pizza from Boston Pizza, as well as every. <laughs> Highlight package plus, boy, you've got to get excited whenever you watch that stuff. Dennis fun. Crawford, welcome to our program. Took a long welcome time to, to get you. you here. A while. Yeah, you're a busy, busy man. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Let's. Uh, we just saw Gaston Howard. Uh, how has he made the transition from uh, kickboxing to boxing? Very easy, because yeah. kickboxing is martial arts kicks and westernized boxing combined. It's easy. Just don't use your feet. <laughs> <laughs> you got started at a young age. Young yes. age of 20, mm -hmm. we talked earlier on. Mm -hmm. uh, involvement, uh, parents were very influential. They helped mom and dad? Yes, they were very supportive of me, uh, both mom and dad. And uh, hopefully in the future they'll be supportive as well, since I'm still <laughs> pursuing a career. I'm not done yet. I'm a young 40. Is it a tough transition to go uh, from where you were, uh, being in the ring, to now coaching? No, actually it's, it's, it's easy, because you've known what it's been like to be in there and to fight, and you know the feeling. Uh, what it's like to take and give, and you can explain the same thing to your fighter. Fighters uh, get a little bit of resentment if you want to try and correct them? Or are they mm. basically focused and real positive? Not if they have respect for you, okay? And respect is earned. That's okay. something you have to earn. Sure is, yes. Oh. We hear about the 90s, about how violent all these sports are in boxing, kickboxing, karate. What age should I put my kids into mm. karate, judo, etc.? What do you say to a parent, uh, their kid shows an interest in that type of sport, you know, and they're saying, oh, it's too violent, he's going to mm. get hurt type of thing. And you, you look at the bad, maybe the cartoons and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Power Rangers and all the controversy mm -hmm. over start, that. Start them young. Start Should them young. Head gear? Should? Um, yes, I believe so for the amateurs. There should be headgear. For pros, no. 
but uh, parents should start the kids young, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Then it's ingrained in there, it's in their mm -hmm. soul, and then they will train mm -hmm. and fight that way mm -hmm. as long as they live. And it's really it, a lot of mental, it, 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 there's a lot of physical activity mm. to it, but I mean, there's a lot of mental concentration, yeah. you know, it, it's just not, just not the physical aspect of it, is it? Um, a lot you, of discipline. You get, yeah, a lot of discipline. You you get your, your, your mental from your physical, mm -hmm. okay? If you train very, very hard physically, okay, then you, then you 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 get mental, uh, a little bit mental mm -hmm. from that. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's <laughs> a yeah. mental discipline. It's I a guess mental we discipline to say together. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Now we were talking earlier on uh, mm. before we had a chance to come on set. Uh, favorite, I guess, uh, movie people that you grew up with that you idolized and used to like. Uh, you were saying you like Bruce Lee. Uh, yes. And you were now advancing your career to go on and do a little bit of uh, movie work. Yeah, I'm I'm training uh, with a with a former Golden Glove boxer uh, named Danny Virtue. He's a very predominant uh, uh, producer, director, um, uh, stunt coordinator, stunt man. Uh, and I've been training with him a few times a week, and we kind of do a barter system. He teaches me stunts <laughs> and to ride horses, and uh, we train together to keep him in shape. We've got a caller for you, Corey. Oh. You're on the line. Go ahead, Corey. Yeah, I was wondering in your career. Uh, or any of your boxers you coached, you were ever? Do they ever worry about showing concern about hurting the other guy too much? I mean, did you ever have that concern, that worry? Um, I think a lot of the, the, a lot of the fighters do have a concern about uh, hurting the other fighters. Especially one of my fighters right now, Gaston Howard, is very concerned. Um, uh, he is a an up and coming world champion, as far as I'm concerned. He has has it spiritually and physically to make it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks for calling. Now, we also uh, would talk, get back to Bruce Lee, because mm. we were just talking. I was talking that yes. uh, one of the shows that I used to just really enjoy watching was David Carradine. And you were telling me a little bit of uh, insight to into David Carradine. Yes, that's, uh, that series was actually made for Bruce Lee, okay? But Bruce Lee was one-third German. They figured he was too, too much Chinese to pull up the part, right? So they looked for a Caucasian, which was mm -hmm. David Carradine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Gar David Carradine got the part. See, you learn anything. Anything there you want go. to know, just watch the locker room. A little bit of trivia. And, right. and now we've got four pizzas left. And how many tickets we have got left to the Glaciers depends on how many phone calls we get. That's right. We've got more callers. But uh, mm -hmm. you got involved at a young age. You advanced your career. Mm -hmm. Where do you see your career going from here? Well, I'd like to fight one more time. And then you I'll do. You call the day. One yeah, time. one more time. I fought in Australia yeah. um, a year ago and, uh, and won a world title. Uh, I'd like to fight one more time. I was 39 at that time. One more time when I'm 40 and we'll call why, it a day. Why, why do you want to fight one more time? Because that'll give me three decades. I fought okay. in the 20s, yeah. 30s, and then it'll be 40s. Trying to get Quite that. an accomplishment. I right? think so, trying yeah. Trying to overcome Gordy Howe's record with the NHL. <laughs> Gordy, NHL. yeah. Well, what, what's it like? You talk about fighting in other countries. What's it like? Is, is their fighting any different from what we see in Canada? It's interesting. They want to they wanna beat you big time, so they, mm. they put you up against their best. Okay. Um, so you make sure when you go you're in good shape because if you're not you're going to get beat okay and if you have the intestinal fortitude to win you're going to win anyways they treat you real well oh they you know it yeah mm -hmm. yeah they, they basically when you that's the one thing i found is when you do travel to another country they really take care of you because mm -hmm. they respect that canadian red and white flag mm -hmm. and it's nice being in the sport as long as i have been as well because uh, you start getting perks it's like if you have a job mm -hmm. uh, you've worked 20 years you get three four weeks holidays if you train martial arts for 20 years, you get perks. They fly you all around the world for free, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice deal. You operate out of the World Kickboxing Academy, yeah. and I understand you've got a, a semi-formal self-defense program right now that you want to uh, get more involved with it come September. Tell us about that. Yes, I, I've been teaching some self-defense for women, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I think it's very important for men and women, mm -hmm. especially women. Mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, being, in this day and age. Unfortunately, you know. uh, being from Surrey, you know, uh, <laughs> where, where I've been in Surrey all my life, yep. to teach mm -hmm. the women. We, we had an incident at the club mm -hmm. uh, where I was teaching a self-defense class where one of the young ladies uh, went to leave and she was upstairs and, and the fella asked her uh, to come into the vehicle with her and she said no, of course. And uh, she used some of the self-defense techniques on this fella, okay, mm -hmm. which we taught in the class mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. okay? She kicked him and hooked him. And he went running the car. He probably went running, crying, and she come down running, crying. So we run up to see if there's anybody there. Of course, they were gone, right? And uh, and it worked out really well. So we want to remind everyone: this is a live phone and talk show. Give us a phone call. The number will come up on your screen. 
And speaking of telephone numbers, if they want to get involved and yeah. sign up, what's the phone number they call? You can call 930-9034. Anytime or is there Anytime, any place. Okay, good. Uh, and we hope you get a lot of uh, success with that because especially in this day and age, unfortunately, that's what you need. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very important. Let's change sports on you just a little bit. Okay. There's a fight coming up Saturday, the return of Iron Mike Tyson. How Mikey. many, ra how many oh, rounds? Mikey. Well, a few of my comrades at uh, Gators Gym where I train mm -hmm. figure it won't go long. They figure it'll be the first, second round. Actually, some of them are down there to watch it. I figure middle round, okay, since mm -hmm. Tyson is owned by Don King and the other fella, which is name? McNeely. McNeely. McNeely is owned by Don King as well. So obviously the idea of the sport is to make money. So they want to go as far as they can, of course, and they want to make a showing of Tyson's first time on. I figure it'll go up into the middle rounds. If, if, the, if the heavyweight division has lacked credibility the last couple of years, is this going to give it the cre credibility sure to kickstart? I think the best thing that ever happened was Tyson go to jail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. It's all promotion, isn't it? Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. they're, entertain dollars and cents. they're entertainers. Dollars yeah. and cents. Yeah. Got next yeah. caller on the line. Art, go ahead. Hello. How are you doing, Art? Hi. Not bad. What's your question? Okay, who is the shortest heavyweight champion of all time? Is that kickboxing? No, that's uh, boxing. Well, I'm, mm. a well, I'm a kickboxer, not a boxer. Heavyweight champion. <laughs> he can't, that, that's a tough that's one, a tough caller, because although the he... Shortest the shortest heavyweight champion of all time is the, very the, easy. The shortest? The shortest. Hmm. Do, do you, uh, you don't happen to know, caller? Yes, I do. You do know. I wouldn't, you're, I you're wouldn't know that. to tell us. I wouldn't Dennis, know that. Dennis is more of a kickboxer, so if oh, you tell us... The shortest with heavyweight champion was a Canadian. His name was Tommy Burns, and he lost hmm. his title to... Uh, the first black heavyweight champion of the time, Jack Johnson, right? Mm -hmm. see, Very that, interesting. That might be a little bit before my time. I don't know, Steve, about yours. But see, that's why we have these phone-in call well, shows, so we can that. have people out in the audience. Yeah, uh, but I found out your mm. birthday's the same day as John Turley that well, we just had in our program, too. So. <laughs> well, the shortest kickboxing world champion is named Stan the Man Longer and Easy. He's from Australia. Okay. He'd be the shortest. Okay. Yeah, it's not well, Dennis Crawford. That's where Tommy Burns lost his title. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Down in Australia. <laughs> Exactly. That's well, caller, okay. because you've given us the answer, you're going to get a Boston pizza. As well as two <laughs> tickets for the Glacier game. Okay. Thanks, Th for thanks Art. In. Thanks, Art. Thanks, you're Colin. welcome. It, it's nice that we get people phone in from all sorts of uh, different mm. sports that want to, you know, ask questions. And yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, the more phone calls, the better. Do you find that there's more people getting involved in kickboxing versus changing format, just going to regular boxing in the gym? There's, there's a change, because you can do the both. Obviously, it's, it's half kickboxing, ha half kick, half boxing, right? So you can change, of course. It's easy. They have boxing skills. Yeah. We've got our next caller in line. Yes. Walter, you're on the line. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, How are um, you doing? I was wondering about, uh, you mentioned about uh, Mike Tyson going mm -hmm. to uh, jail. I uh, was also wondering what your thoughts were, because you mentioned with both fighters being owned by Don King that you expected it would go to the middle rounds. It almost sounds like you without saying the word, might the be fix. talking about a little fixing there. The fix might be in? Well, the best thing might have been is that Don King had ended up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's going back to court, uh -huh. uh, ironically. There might have been a little bit of, might have been a little bit of insinuation there, but, uh, but we all know what the ultimate goal is in, in the sport, and, and you look at the final picture, and that's a money picture, right? And, uh, but we like to look as people, as the athletes, mm -hmm. right? We like to look at the two persons, the two people fighting. I don't think it's that way all the time. Okay, Just a small percentage of the time. But I mean, that's more than the 90s, though, isn't it? isn't it? Anyway, guys, I mean, money in hockey, money in basketball, it, it's the almighty dollar, and it, it, it's unfortunate, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, the dollar seems to talk very, is, very yeah. dominant nowadays. Sure it does, yeah. Yeah, especially in the sport of boxing. <laughs> Do you think there's more people getting involved in boxing, especially at the higher calibers, uh, basically for the dollars and cents versus the, the love of the game? Oh, sure, yeah. You'll see a lot of guys that come back... Um, uh, just because of the money, I feel. Okay, why would they come back when they're 40 years old, 45 mm -hmm. years old? You I'm know, when they've sure. already, when they already have lots of money and they have their homes and they have their life together. Yeah, that's true. That's it true. could be they're sitting around the table. They got Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, Tommy mm -hmm. Hearns, right? And they're all talking about the fight they just fought. And Duran's thinking, "Geez, I can still do it. I can still do it." Is an ego, a little bit. That's true. But a bit of money involved too. So it's a little bit of both, I believe. Yeah. Got our next caller on the line. Andre, you're on the line. Go ahead. Hi, Dennis. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say that uh, the classes there at the World Kickboxing Academy are uh, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you make a lot of good friends like Dennis mm -hmm. and Gaston and uh, Dale, and um, you really feel good about yourself 
um, with all Do the classes roller? and stuff, and it's not just for guys, it's for girls. And yeah. Have you learned a lot, Caller? Yeah, I did, actually. Good. I learned I learned quite a bit, and it wasn't just, like, um, in the fighting area either, like, the self-defense area. It was with uh, self-discipline and, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> excuse me, stuff like that. <laughs> so you would recommend it? Oh, yeah, I'd recommend it to anybody. It was a lot of fun, and you meet a lot of good friends. Good, good. I appreciate your call. Thanks and, for uh, calling. Thank you. Thanks for the Bye -bye. input. Thanks very, nice. very much. Thanks for calling. And uh, I believe she's also going to get two tickets for the Glaciers games. And I don't know if we've got any pizzas left. Uh, they haven't told me that yet, but uh, they'll keep us informed. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we talk about the sport. I talk about this. Do you think there should there be a law, as we talked earlier on, about you know King owning two fighters like that? that they, I mean, if I'm a betting man, I mean, and I'm not. I mean, we mm, of course not. Of course but not. But if I went down to Vegas yeah. and said, "Look, I want to wager a couple dollars on this," mm -hmm. is it fair? Well. That's a tough question. I mean, who's getting life's not, <laughs> life's not. Life's not fair. That is a tough question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is a person worth? Yeah. That's what true. you can get. Yeah. And yeah, we do. True. We do have. We do have. Uh, we a do have two. We, we yeah, have we two left. A couple pieces and, uh, left. And there you go. You know that last caller, Audrey. You get back to your self-defense. And I guess the word I've been looking for is self-esteem. This this kickboxing and martial arts really has to give you a lot of self-esteem, sure doesn't it? Sure does. Through the training, yeah. and, and the more fit and the more you feel, the more, the better you feel about your body and about your person, mm -hmm. the more self-esteem you get. Mm -hmm. But self-esteem is gained as well by the way you live your life, oh, sure. right? Um, the way you do things, the way you deal with problems, okay? If you deal with your problems head on, self-esteem and, and your confidence will grow. So it's a, it's a, it's a life process. We've got our next caller on the line. Kim, go ahead. Kim? We had our next caller there. So you got camera shy or phone Are you shy. there? Hello. Kim, Hi. yes? <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? Thanks for calling. Oh, no problem. I just wanted to ask Dennis, um, with women in kickboxing, I noticed that there are very few women that you hear of. Where do you think it's going to go with women in the future? Do you think it's going to um, grow or that it's, it's uh, women tend to be a little shy to get into kickboxing? Well, Kim, hopefully the sport with the women fighting will grow, okay? Uh, I know there's a lot more fights in the States than there are here. Um, I would like to see more women get involved but then you, it comes to the promotion of the sport as well and uh, if the promotion's not there and if the women aren't there to fight and train then it won't happen mm -hmm. okay excellent okay, okay yeah, thanks, thanks Kim. Kim. thanks Kim. Bye. yeah it's, it's nice to see uh, women get involved mm -hmm. and wanting to get involved mm -hmm. in a sport that mm -hmm. basically uh, from what I've been told has really been predominantly a male oriented sport yes yes it has been for for a number of years I've been doing it for 20 years and it hasn't changed too much, okay, uh, because the money's not in the sport for it to grow. Um, uh, you have to have that finances there and the uh, promotion. Final things, if you could tell any of the youngsters at home, uh, should they get involved, should they not get involved, what could you tell them before we let you go? Yes, train hard um, and get involved in any kind of sport, okay, and make sure you look for a good mentor, somebody that you can uh, look up to and follow, okay, it's very important in life to find somebody that you can... Uh, and they don't have a bad one right here in the fellow no, we're sitting kidding. right across from. Yeah. Dennis, Dennis, it's been great having you on. And Thanks one more thing. Yep. You bet. Can I just say hello to my mom and dad? You sure okay. can. You just Hi, did. Mom. <laughs> Hi, Dad. And we know Dennis is a big supporter. And anybody who wants to watch any boxing, you can go out in, uh, I believe it's Abbotsford, this coming Friday for the Western Canada Summer Games. There's a boxing event going on out there. So go on out, take it in, because it's uh, all for a good cause. And we talked earlier on about basketball yeah, and, they've and how got they're getting close to being settled. They, they are, well, as far as I'm concerned, they're settled. And uh, we're going to have basketball at GM Place in September. And uh, the jury's out as far as I'm concerned.